What is beauty? Beauty isn't just about what you see on the outside. Rather, how you feel on the inside. Beauty is about embracing, accepting all that you are. Be kind to yourself. Even to those little imperfections that make you uniquely you. See beauty in the sparkle of your eyes and the warmth of your smile. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Everything God made is beautiful. Own it. Welcome back to my channel. It is Wednesday's hump day and I am back guys. I've been on vacation and instead of going to the beach or somewhere like that, I decided to go home and spend some time with my family. I hadn't had, uh, you know, several days at home just to hang out with my children, my grandchildren, see my mom and my sisters and my nephews and nieces. So I spent about three, four days at home. And I'm back in the city. I'm still on vacation today. We'll go back to work tomorrow. So I'm back and I wanted to upload a video. I did not vlog or anything while I was on vacation. I just took a bunch of pictures of my family and my grandchildren. And that's pretty much all I did, guys. I did not want to um, interrupt that time. I wanted to give myself an opportunity to just enjoy my family. So that's what I did. So I'm back today and... Um, I've been doing a lot of reading while I've been off, and um, so I wanted to come on and share my thoughts. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome to Lydia's Life After 50 TV. It's a lifestyle channel. It's all about my life and how I have gotten through some of the rough spots, how I've celebrated the good times, and just maintaining and being happy and at peace with myself after 50. So if this is something you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button. And I would love to have you part of the family. So today, guys, I'm just going to talk about a few things. I have been all over the place with things that I want to share with you guys here on the channel. And today, I'm just going to overview a couple things because I had planned on live streaming um, about the, the book that we were reading, Life Interrupted by Priscilla Shire. But I decided just to incorporate it into this video today. And so I hope that you have been reading. And um, uh, as I was stating before, the, the book itself was more religious in nature than I anticipated. But it still has some very good, um, valid things that we can associate with, our, with your life. And of course, you guys know that I am a Christian. I love God. So I don't have a problem with reading things that correlates my life with, you know, living according to the scriptures. Some people may, but I don't. But in case you did, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but that book is very uh, helpful. And I'm still reading it, actually. I'm not uh, finished reading it. But it basically talked about how you can live your life and things happen to you in your life that are considered to be life interruptions that can throw you completely off course of your life. And we go through that throughout life. It's not something that happens one, once or twice. It happens throughout life. Life is always throwing you a curveball and it's always creating interruptions that sometimes can seem like you're never going to get over it or you don't know how to work through it and it can stall you where you are for a moment. But it talks about how to have patience and persevere through it, how to humble yourself and how to get on your knees when you need to and allow God to just completely take over. Because sometimes we get to a point in our lives where we cannot figure it out. And all we got to do is just throw up our hands at that point and allow God to come in and um, take over and allow him to do what he needs to do. 
because sometimes things happen in your life because you need humbling. Sometimes we can get so cocky in our attitude or we think that things can't happen to us. It's happening to everybody around us, but it doesn't happen to us. But same things that happen to other people can happen to us. You can you can fall victim to um, a lot of struggles, you know, whether it's financial, whether it's emotional with our hearts and relationships, whether it's a uh, illness, something that strikes our body and we have to learn to live with it, or it could be terminal and we have to figure out how to accept it. A lot of things can enter up your life that can cause you to give up and you just get to a point where you just don't know what to do. And sometimes we um, fall uh, prey to depression and um, just giving up on life. So this book is very instrumental in helping you to learn how to do it. It actually uh, had an analogy with Jonah and the whale and how he had to exercise patience because he was inside that big fish for days and it was no way that he was going to get out of it so he had to humble himself and to to allow God to to take control because he rebelled against everything that God wanted him to do um, and he wanted to go his own course and God had something completely different from it and sometimes that's the way life is we may have a plan of our life of things that we think we're going to do. And sometimes God has to humble you and let you see that that's not the course for you. You know, everybody is striving to be rich and famous, but sometimes rich and famous is not the course for you. Sometimes it's going to be one of those people that that's meant to give to others and to live on a lower level of, of means. And you might feel like you want your life to be up here, but your life is not meant to be there. So at that point in time, you got to allow God to show you what it is. And so that's what he had to do. And through his time in the belly of that fish, you know, he truly had to count on God because there was no way that he would have been able to work it out. And God caused that fish to throw him up. So I, I actually understood and accepted that analogy and it was okay with me. And it, it, it just helps me to see that, you know, no matter how long I go on a course where it seems like things are going good, there could always be an obstacle or a tree down on the road, up, up, you know, up down the road somewhere. It may not be as far as I can see right now, but it could be down the road. And I have to always be able to humble myself and to know that whatever it is, you know, God is going to work it out for the good. It's going to be something that I need to learn or something I'm needing to give to somebody else along the way. And today I'm, I'm just entitling this video, Eat, Pray, and Love. You know, we have to nourish ourselves in order to to be able to be strong and that's nourishment whether it is a actual uh, nutritional nourishment or mental emotional nourishment we got to always nourish ourselves be rich in knowledge and uh, physical strength you know if you will to be able to handle the things that are coming along don't neglect your body you know when your body is telling you things you got to take a moment and sit down and figure out what it is that works for you that helps you you know everybody don't have the same type of uh, stamina so you know your physical workout may not be the same as someone else you may see someone who's out there lifting weights and have this high impact exercise routine and some people may have something very easy and calm as walking you know walking I tell people all the time if you're able to move your legs you can walk you know my um, family members sometimes come to me and they say I wish I could lose this weight you know I don't know what I need to do and I and I simply tell them you don't have to do all of the physical you know, strenuous exercises that you see a lot of people do simply take 10 to 15 or 20 minutes per day and do some brisk walking you know when you get your metabolism moving you can lose weight it may not fall off as fast as some things um, that happen in your life that you can do as far as exercise but it will fall off and once you get your metabolism moving, it can fall off and you can feel better about yourself. And I've often shared that with them a lot of times. When I first started working out, I've never been a big woman, but I have been to the point where I felt like I really needed to lose, you know, about 10 pounds. And uh, I started with walking because I truly was not at the strength level to get in the floor and do sit-ups and you know all of these things that you see people doing so I started with walking and I walked every day for 30 minutes and it just quickly started to drop you know and then once you build your stamina then you can incorporate some other things if you like but that's not something you have to do some women just have bigger goals as far as what they want to do and to pray prayer changes things guys I don't know what your prayer life is I don't know what your belief is 
But when you pray about your life, when you pray and ask God to take a hold of you and give you the strength and um, the motivation and the patience to be able to handle obstacles that come in your life and you sincerely pray from within, God will move in your life. He will. He will move in your life in a way that you never would have imagined. When I was heartbroken, you know, I didn't have a clue how I was going to work through that. I didn't know the first thing that I was going to do to be able to get over this heartbreak. I wanted to roll up, crawl up in my bed, and pull the covers over my head. And if I could have stayed there every single day, guys, I would have stayed there and just cried some big baby tears into my pillow. But I knew that, that my life could not resort to just rolling up and wallowing up in my bed every day crying. I knew that there were things I needed to do in this world. I knew there was places I wanted to see and people I wanted to meet and smiles I wanted to have and love I wanted to give. And it was not going to be the end of me. So I had to humble myself and just say, Lord, I'm not strong enough to do this. And I need you right now. You told me that you would never leave me or forsake me. And so I need to humble myself. And God heard my cry. He heard that sincere cry that I had. I, I welled out to him. And I'm not ashamed to say that. And he moved in my life in such a powerful way, guys, that I don't even think about it. I don't even miss it, you know. And that is powerful when you can come to a realization in your life that you really don't want to be in that position. You don't want what you had before. When you can get to that point where you feel that way, you can truly say that God is moving and he is real and powerful in your life. And finally, is to love. Love. Don't allow anything in your life to ever stop you from giving the love that God has given you. The love to love people, you know, to love yourself most of all. That's the first thing you got to do. You got to be willing to love yourself beyond anything, you know, to accept yourself and all your, you know, imperfections, you know, that people may say, or even yourself, what you look at and you feel are not the best. You got to love them. You know, no one can love you as much as you can love yourself. That is so true. If you don't love yourself, guys, you will never understand the power of love to be able to give it to someone else. You have to truly accept everything about you. And I often speak, I have said this in so many videos that I've had, you know, if there are little things that you want to change about yourself, work on it. You know, if there are big things, you work on it. You have to study and research what it is that you can do within your power within your power. Sometimes we have unrealistic goals, guys, and you're not made to be like the next person. Everything that God made was beautiful. Every single thing he's beautiful. I don't think God created a thing that was not beautiful. And even though sometimes our, our eyes see things and we may feel that it's not beautiful, but God doesn't look at anything he created as a mistake, as a flaw, as unbeautiful. Everything he created is beautiful, and you have to love it. It is an insult to him when you don't love who you are because he created you unique. And you have to learn how to appreciate what it is he did with you. Whether it is uh, something that you were born with that you feel was uh, something that you couldn't quite use. Some people are born and don't have complete limbs or they're limbless. You know, and we don't quite understand that in our mind, but there's a beauty to that. It's something beautiful about seeing a person who learns how to survive when they don't have the completeness that God gave all of us with limbs and fingers and things like that. And our little weak minds don't understand it. We don't understand what was behind his uh, creating people that way, but we have to appreciate them and love them. And that is what this world is about. It's about love. And until we learn that lesson, it's going to always be misunderstandings. It's going to always be ugliness in this world. It's going to always be hatred in this world. And until we learn what it means to truly love and love unconditionally. So that is all I have today, guys. I am so glad to be back home and gearing up to go back to work tomorrow. I'm feeling really good. And I just wanted to share that with you all today. It was on my heart. You know, some days I wake up with things that are on my heart that I just want to share. And because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to try to motivate and encourage us to be all that we can be in our uniqueness, guys. And that is it.
So I guess, I hope you guys are having a wonderful hump day. Hope your day is beautiful. It's beautiful, gorgeous outside right now. And I'm just enjoying and relaxing at home today. And um, just, you know, want to share with you guys this morning. So I will see you guys later this week. And once again, if you're new to my channel, I want to say thank you for, for tuning in. Thank you for joining. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for viewing. And to all of my subbies, you know I love you from the bottom of my heart. So you guys have a wonderful, fabulous rest of the day. And I'll see you soon. Peace and love. Bye, guys.